Good morning, Gus and Loretta. How y'all doing this morning? I know, I know. Hey, I know, I get it. I get it. I fixed a really good breakfast. You know what I'm saying? I understand. Luckily, luckily, Loretta, your bowl is relatively close this morning. Sometimes I often wonder if y'all had a farm meeting and y'all decided that y'all gonna try to help me hit my 12,000 step goal every day. That's, that's my ultimate goal. Happy if I get 10,000. I'm not mad at 10,000. No, not at all. But I love to get 12,000. So I do appreciate y'all looking out after me. I do. I certainly appreciate y'all looking out after me. Y'all, we have, we have rain yesterday. We got rain already this morning. We got a break and I thought this would be the perfect time to get out here and knock the chores out. Cause honestly, honestly, doing the chores in the rain is zero fun, I can promise you. Little thing I've been changing up. So I always worry that they may steal each other's multivitamin, a little children vitamin I get them every morning. So now I've just been giving it to them regular. Here you go, girl. Here you go. Down the hatch. There you go. Come on, Gus, get yours. There you go, buddy. Now I know they got it. It's always crazy. It's always crazy. You know, we went so many months, basically 12 months, with a little bit of rain. And the end of January, Loretta, I gotta let your food soak. We gotta let it soak. The end of January and the first of February, I feel like we got more rain in that little short span than we did the entire year last year. All right, girl, I'm getting you. I'm getting, hey, is Gus anything about Valentine's Day? Or is that secret, Gus? You don't want me to say anything? Okay, I won't say nothing then, buddy. I won't say nothing. Come on, Loretta, come on, girl. There you go. What you got, Holly? Did I spill a little bit of pig food? Mm. I couldn't have spilled that much. Oh, there's two pieces there. Well, I appreciate you cleaning it up. I'm gonna be honest with you. I appreciate it. Y'all, and since it's gonna be raining all day, I think, I think I'm gonna start some of my seeds and show you guys what we're gonna grow this year in the garden for food for ourselves and the farm stand. We're gonna change up, we'll change up quite a lot this year versus what I've done in the past and especially what I did last year. I totally learned a lot last year actually selling produce on the farm stand, which we've never ever done. We never did that at our old farm. Last year was our first year, so learning a little bit. So in the past two years, I've learned a lot about flower farming and selling vegetables here in our area. And I'm gonna tweak some things up. Next year, or not next year, what am I saying? It's this year, this year, Jason. Duh. All right, the water, still filling their water up. Um, But this year, I'm going to do both the flowers and the vegetables in the farm stand. Now we did do a little bit of uh, selling some flowers in the farm stand, but I think I'm gonna do it a lot more this year and just kind of tweak some things. We're gonna tweak some things on the farm stand too. Y'all saw in the other video, the refrigerator is not working. It's not working. Um, it freezes up just like the other refrigerator. So I just think our high humidity is just not gonna let that happen. It's just not gonna work. Loretta, y'all gotta see this. Loretta, look at that. Girl, no wonder Gus loves you. Yeah, no wonder. No wonder he loves you so much. Come on, buddy. Come on, go with me. Come on, go with me. Come on. Hey, buddy, we are going to try to start some seeds today, but I don't think what we're going to start today is going to interest you. But those tillage radishes, 
I think I think I'm gonna have plenty for you. Yeah, I really do. And y'all know who else loves the tillage radishes? The honeybees. The honeybees absolutely love radishes because they put on a bloom. It must have some great pollen because that radish field over there is going to be loaded with honeybees and native bees. And I can't wait to show you guys. Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing this morning? Huh? Everybody's ready for a snack this morning, right? Okay. We're gonna get y'all fixed up. Y'all come on. Whoa! Y'all come on. About time to move you guys. Yeah. Gotta figure out where I wanna put y'all. I think I'm gonna put them in that spot right there. They've never been there before. And I think that'll be a great spot. And you're starting to see some green come on. I can actually see green popping up in here. Sure can. Hey, Ryan. Let's check your feeders this morning. What they look like, huh? That one looks pretty good. I hear a big flock of crows over there in the wooded area. You can tell spring is getting near with all the, the songbirds and the morning doves and the crows. It is, uh, it's getting really, really, really close. What's going on, Cheese? How things been going out here with the girls? And the guys, huh? Everybody seems to be doing quite well. And I must say, the girls have been doing an amazing job with their egg laying. I mean, it has been awesome. Yeah. Let's go look and see what they've done today. We're thinking that we're probably going to add some more chickens to the flock this spring. Probably get us another nesting box to go in here, too. Maybe two more nesting box. We'll see. They're quite large, but we'll see. Reason being, y'all, the eggs in the farm stand are a hit. Um, it's been going well, but I say probably in the last three to four weeks, it's been going really well. So we're thinking that we need to add a few more girls, maybe six more girls to the flock. I put out three dozen this morning. That was at about 5.30ish. I got a notification on my phone and looked and they were gone at 6.18 this morning. <laughs> they sell out almost as fast as I get them out there. Well, this morning we got 16, but that's okay. We'll take 16 girls. Hey girls, we're thinking about moving moving the bus to a new spot. Not today though, not today. I'm not gonna have time today. It's gonna be in the rains coming, so today would not be a good day for that at all. Today, we are gonna start some seeds, ladies, and whatever we're planting today starting the day, I think you guys will get some of this and will enjoy it. Unlike Moody. Moody won't like where we're starting the day. But most definitely you guys will. Alright girl. Let's go put this water up. We're not using it anymore. Go carting some eggs and see what's happening in the barn, okay? I gotta let the farm boss know that we're starting seeds today. Another thing that's also doing well at the farm stand is our honey. We've actually sold out of honey here. We got to get the Nectar Ninjas, Roy and Rachel, to bottle, bottle us up some more and get it where we can get it back out there on the farm stand. But 
can't be more happier about that either. You know, it's just something about, it's just something about something that you're producing or, it's just hard to put in words. You know, you, you're growing your own vegetables, but if you're able to produce that and, and, and put it out on a farm stand and a family or the community comes and purchases it and, and, and keeps doing it over and over, y'all, it's just, it's just hard to explain. It really is. I have been wanting to be a farmer, hey buddy, for a very, very, very long time. 20 plus years. Um, we've been on YouTube eight years now. And the fact that we're actually doing it is, I don't know, it's just, it's just always been my dream and goal. And uh, I can't thank you guys enough. I can't thank the community enough. It's just, it's just really awesome. While I'm in here, I want to give you a quick update on the Volkswagen bus. I know you guys see it in all the videos and it's just sitting here. Well, the seats are at the upholstery shop. So there's a gentleman, older gentleman right down the road from us that does, that does upholstery and he's working on the seats. So there's no seats in it. And honestly, me and Mary Carl could work on it and probably get it going. But I feel like I feel like if we get this thing running, and me too, not just her, but me too, we're going to want to drive this thing. You know, we're going to be anticipating antsy. We got this thing going. Yay for us. You know, and, and, our, and our reward for getting it going is driving it. So what if the seats are at the upholstery shop for two more weeks or three more weeks and this thing's over here purring like a kitten? So I've decided I'm just going to wait till the seats come back. You know, it'd just be terrible, especially for her, in my, just my opinion, is that we're over here working on it, and it's running, and we can't drive it, you know? So, that's just where we stand on the bus. Good morning, Pete. Pete, I hear your alarm clock over here working. It must have got you up bright and early this morning. What's going on, Biscuit? How you doing, hmm? Looking beautiful as ever. Yes, you are. I'm getting you, girl. We're fixing to get you right now. Tell y'all what. I'm going to let these guys out for a minute or something. Matter of fact, they look like they won't out. Y'all done got used to going out, hadn't you? I'm going to come back over here and shut y'all up because the emus they got to eat. But y'all come on out and shake a leg if you want to. Because we got some more rain coming back in this afternoon. And so I'm going to have to shut the door and let the emus have access to their stall. You got me? I'm sure they understand me. <laughs> I feel like they do. I feel like they completely understand what I'm telling them. All right, Miss Peach. Here you go, girl. There you go. There you go. That a girl. Hey, while you're enjoying your breakfast, I was gonna let you know we're gonna start some seeds today for the farm. I normally start them by now, you know, but they be keep, they keep talking about we're getting another Arctic blast coming soon, or coming, not soon, but they keep predicting it. So I've kind of been holding off about seed starting because I don't know, but y'all, I mean, I got a greenhouse. I actually, I actually have a heater that I got from Grower Solutions, a gas, that, that's a legit greenhouse heater. I just haven't had time to hook it up. I need to call a gas company so they can run me a line from the tank and I gotta get the electricians over here so they can get my electrical hooked up for it. I probably need to put a little small junction box in there. So I just haven't had time to do it, but I will be so grateful when I get that heater put up in there. Then I wouldn't have to worry about no Arctic blast. Will be Sylvester? No. But eventually it's coming. It's coming. All right, girl. But I, you know, I guess if, the, if it is cold, we can just bring the seeds inside for a few days if we have to. All right. Let's go let everybody out.
know, this is probably one of my most favorite things in the morning is to let the goats out. It's just fun, isn't it, buddy? I love coming out here and greeting you guys, letting y'all out first thing in the morning. Okay, y'all, come on. Come on. Y'all come on and shake a leg this morning. And what I've been doing is just shutting this door like this, and then I'll go open Peach's door so Peaches can come out and I have to worry about babies like Jesse going in there and messing with Peaches while she eats, right? That's right. You are a sweetheart, though. You know it? You are a sweetheart. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But you can't mess with a boss lady, okay? She has to eat. When Peaches gets through eating, you know, she wants to come out and shake a leg. You know it? Yeah. She wants to come out and shake a leg. If not, she'll tear my darn door up over it, beating on it. You know what I mean? All right, let me go open that door up for a girl. I can love on you all day. You know that. You know that. All right, Miss Peach. Come on out when you get done. Looks like the goats need some minerals. We're gonna get them some minerals. I gotta get some more minerals. Yeah. Next trip to town, we gotta grab some minerals. I think Peaches is done. Which means we're done in here. So now we can open this back up right here and the boss lady can come out. There you go, Peach. How are their minerals this morning, sir? We're gonna pick you up some new ones. Yeah, we're gonna pick you up some new minerals uh, probably tomorrow after this rain's gone, okay? Y'all got enough to last you today. Honestly, this rain coming in, I really need to fertilize. At least the onions. Everything else looks great. I think I may let it be. But the onions, onions, I want to get a little bit of onion fertilizer on them while this rain's coming in. I can't tell you guys how gorgeous the fall garden is this year. I mean, gorgeous. Onions are really starting to come on now. I'm using an onion fertilizer that comes from Hoss Tools. You know, the main thing about onions right now is we're really trying to get the tops to grow because the tops are going to feed the bulb because that green is going to give energy to the bulb and make those big, delicious onions when we harvest them in probably early summer. I'm going to try to come out here and harvest some greens today. You can see our mustards are looking great. I tell you, the Swiss chard really, really, really is starting to come on now. It really is. Probably going to pick us some lettuce from our green mix over there. Probably going to pick us some turnip greens today, some collard greens today. And look at our broccoli. Look at there. Oh, man, I can't wait for some fresh broccoli. I cannot wait for it right there. Isn't it beautiful? All right, so this is what we're gonna do this year in the garden. This is probably, if you guys have been following us, this is a little bit different than we've done in the past. 
So what I learned last year in the farm stand is that the only summer vegetable that sold in our farm stand were tomatoes. Squash didn't sell, zucchini didn't sell, okra, peppers, nothing. We would put it out there within a few hours, all the tomatoes are gone, everything else is still there. And we planted a huge, huge garden last year, which I'm not doing this year. It just, it was just way too big. Then we had the crazy, extremely, it's always hot and humid here, but last year was over the top. And I just got unmotivated. It was just so much work and it was just too big. So this year we're doing smaller plots. And I'm gonna stagger growing seasons and it's just, it's just, I'm just gonna do things different. I learned a lesson last year, number one, our community, our area, doesn't want anything but tomatoes. Uh, number two, just it, it, it's just too much for me, and especially with Brooke's health now, not knowing you know how long it's going to be till she gets back to being able to help me um, like she has in the past. There's no way I can handle a huge garden like that. No, no way. And honestly, you know, I don't feel like we're at the point where I can actually hire somebody to help me full-time or part-time in the garden so it's just kind of just going to be me which is fine because this is what i love so all that being said so we're changing things up this year we're going to grow tomatoes and we're just going to grow several different varieties of tomatoes and but i'm going to focus a lot on us versus growing this humongous massive tomato patch and then whatever we don't eat i want to put on the farm stand the tomatoes I'm growing this year are, this is a new one that's out. It is a Celebrity Plus. Now, a regular Celebrity is delicious. This one's supposed to be even better, more disease resistant. Here in our hot, humid climates, we have to deal with blight, funguses, that kind of thing. Um, so this is supposed to be a better version of the old Celebrity, which was still great to grow in our area. Number two. This is my new favorite, my go-to tomato. This is it, the Red Snapper. It used to be the Bellarosa. I like the Red Snapper better now. It puts on a little bit more tomatoes. There are larger tomatoes, and it's, a, and it's not a little bit to me in my area. It's more disease resistant than the Bellarosa. Don't get me wrong, the Bellarosa is an excellent tomato. I love it. But I'm, I'm, I'm doing some little things different this year and I wanted to grow some new tomatoes and so therefore I wanted to take one out and I took the Bellarosa out. But we're growing the Red Snapper. Another one I took out was the Halsinator. Again, an excellent tomato. But instead of growing the Bellarosa and the Halsinator, I'm growing two colored varieties. And that is Chef's Choice Orange. This tomato is fantastic flavor wise this is an amazing tomato it is and it gives me that little that little extra color that i think would do well on the farm stand here's the new one so i sent greg key at house tools a message i said look if i gotta grow one tomato this year one what do you what do you suggest without hesitation he told me this tomato and this tomato is going to be the free seed you get this year with our promo code. That is the Berkeley tie-dyed tomato. This one is just a gorgeous tomato, and I guarantee you it tastes wonderful. So this year, what you have to do, you have to put the Berkeley tie-dyed seeds, the 10 seed pack, in your cart and use promo code COGSQUAD24 and that will get you the free pack of seeds. You do have to put it in your cart, but they will be free. You're not gonna get charged for them. And the cherry tomato I'm growing this year, and this is a new one, I've always grown the Sun Golds. But I've had so many people, you got to try the Sun Sugar. You got to try the Sun Sugar. You got to try the Sun Sugar. Even Mr. Greg over there at Hoss Tools, he grew these. And so I'm giving these a shot this year. Uh, I got a feeling that they're very similar to uh, the Sun Golds, but I'm going to try them this year, and I can't wait because 
since it's got the word sugar in it, I know these are going to be extremely sweet, and that's what I love about cherry tomatoes. We can't have a summer garden without these two items, and that is summer squashes. And that is a crookneck summer squash, which is a yellow summer squash. This one is gentry. This one is a no-brainer. Summer squashes are easy to grow. Some are even easier and produce a lot more. That's gentry. This is a great summer squash. The other summer squash I'm growing is a zucchini. Again, this spineless beauty zucchini is going to keep growing all year. It's going to produce a lot of zucchini. And we love zucchini. We love both these. We just love them all year long. We love them, love them, love them. Mary Carl's favorite thing is zucchini bread. So, and she loves making it. So, I mean, I got to grow zucchini. Sticking with squash, this is what I did not grow last year. Winter squash. I did not grow any winter squash. I had plans to, but it just didn't happen. I made my garden kind of too big, and I should have let save some space for winter squash because winter squash is amazing. And a lot of people think that it's called winter squash. You should plant it in the fall and winter, but that's not the case. You want to plant your winter squash in midsummer. And when it's ready to harvest, it's gonna be fall and it keeps over winter. If you ever notice the shell on a winter squash is so thick and it could keep up to six months in a cool dry place, maybe even longer. We've had Cherokee, um, I think that Seminole pumpkins last for almost eight months. So what we're growing in the winter squash this year are our two favorites by far. And that is this small wonder spaghetti squash it's fantastic. You can even grow this on a trellis. That's what I did at Little Cog, our old farm. And a butternut squash. We love making boats out of these. Uh, we love making, you can make spaghetti out of this and we've done it before and it's delicious. Hence the name spaghetti squash because it's real stringy. Y'all, we love both of these. And when it's December and January and February, we can have squash, we can have soups, we can have roasted squash. Fabulous. Love winter squash. Another thing that we're doing this year that we did not do last year, but we have at our old farm. This year we're growing beans and peas. And we are going to grow a bush bean. Normally I would grow the rattlesnake pole beans. Phenomenal. Great snap bean. If you like snap beans or green beans, love the rattlesnake pole bean. This year I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try Hulse's uh, green bean. And this is a bush bean. Not a, not a pole bean, so I don't have to trellis this one or build out an elaborate trellis system for this one versus the pole bean style. Um, actually, I've never grown a bush bean. All my snap beans have always been pole beans. So I'm anxious to try this. We all love this here. Can't wait. And this one I am going to grow on a trellis, but that is lima beans. This is a, this is a pole bean. And we've grown limas and butter beans before in the past at our old farm. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I got my granddaddy's um, vintage old pea sheller. Can't wait, y'all. Cannot wait. Since we had an amazing crop of pink eye purple hole peas last year, and we're still eating those to this day, we're planting them again right here and the what i planted last year worked so well drought terrible weather had zero pest issues and i didn't do anything i didn't fertilize it i didn't do nothing to those pink eye purple holes and they were phenomenal and the ones that i grew last year and i'm gonna grow this year is the mississippi pink eye purple hole pea now you may be saying jason what is a pink eye purple hole pea it's kind of like a black eye pea pretty much um, it's a little bit different in flavor. This is a staple here in the South. I'm gonna have a huge, huge patch of pink eye purple holes this year. I think I'm gonna make even probably twice as large as I did last year, but I think I'm gonna stagger it. So I'm gonna plant one crop, maybe wait a few weeks and plant another crop so we're not out there picking all the time. Love, love, love pink eye purple holes. And y'all, that's it for now for the vegetables. That's it. You may be saying, well, Jason, there's something missing. No cucumbers. I'm not growing cucumbers this year. Mary Carl, 
used to love cucumbers. Used to. She would eat every single cucumber I would grow. She's gotten older. I guess her palate's changed. Her taste put changed. She didn't eat a single cucumber I grew last year. If she did, it was not many at all. We had cucumbers out the yin yang. The cucumbers didn't sell on the farmers on the farm stand. And we still got pickles left over from two and three years ago. If anything, I may go to the uh, feed store and pick up one plant, if anything. But I'm not growing a whole bunch of cucumbers this year. The same with okra. We grow okra almost every year. Again, did not do well on the farm stand at all. Nobody bought it. Nobody bought it. And okra is one of those things that you have to pick every single day. Every day. And we got tired of okra. I don't know. I just feel like it's a lot of work involved with okra. I'm not knowing what's going to what this summer is going to be like with brook. Um, so I just feel like if I want okra, I'll just go to the farmer's market here locally and go buy me some okra that day. I'm not starting peppers by seed. Uh, I usually grow bell peppers. I grow jalapeno peppers. I grow banana peppers. Again, nobody, nobody bought them on the farm stand. And I do plan on getting some banana peppers and probably some jalapeno peppers for ourselves. And I'm just gonna buy a plant or two from the feed store instead of starting a bunch of seeds. It's just, that'd be just, just a waste, honestly. Now, some other things that we're growing back here are some flowers. I'm gonna do zinnias this year. I'm going to do, of course, the Cog Hill Farm Sunflower Collection. And I'm going to do a lot of summertime cover crops. Now, the, these flowers are gonna be for cut flowers and cover crops and for the pollinators. So not only the zinnias are going to be for um, for us to cut, make cut flowers out of and put out there on the farm stand or probably take some of the petals from the past, but it's an excellent cover crop. The bees and the pollinators are going to love it. And, you know, we enjoy them as well. We really do. The same for the sunflowers this year. And I do plan on doing a huge plot of black oil sunflower seeds. This will be year three of me doing that again. Everybody loves these. They do make great cut flowers, but this is an excellent cover crop for your summer garden. The birds love it. The pollinators love it. The bees, the butterflies. This is just a win-win here. And then when it's done, chop and drop. Turn it back over in the soil. It's just great. Great weed suppression. I love growing flowers for cover crops. So last year, I ran across a cover crop that Hall sells that is called Super B Facilia. Oh my gracious. It was so thick and had these gorgeous purple bloom that was like, like silky feathers. That's what it reminds you of. And let me tell y'all, the bees and the pollinators absolutely loved it. More so than anything that I've ever grown. When you walked over there, I mean, it was so loud with all the buzzing. And they was just covered. It looked like the, the 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 plants were moving. The bees love this. So that's why I'm growing this. And also a great cover crop. Chop and drop. Weed suppression. Helps with erosion. Perfect. 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 But you can see a theme this year is that we're really trying to help the bees as much as possible. That's why I'm growing this other cover crop that I have grown at the old farm. But it's been a while since I've grown it. And that is buckwheat. Buckwheat is a great cover crop. It really does well if you have a phosphorus deficiency. Um, but buckwheat is a great cover crop. Extremely easy to grow. And it flowers. And the bees love buckwheat. But y'all, that's pretty much it for now. I may change my mind. I may add some stuff later. I don't know. But for now, this is our game plan here on the farm. And so today, honestly... Today, the only thing we're going to start in seed trays are the tomatoes. These take a little bit longer to germinate. They're going to take a little bit longer to get mature. And what I'll probably do is, is just wait a few weeks and start my squash in seed trays. And I'll wait a couple more weeks and start my sunflowers in seed trays. But everything else you see here will be direct seeded. And always remember, if you do use our link, which is down below or on our website, www.coghillfarm.com 
farm.com. We'll get a small commission and no extra cost to you guys. And don't forget to use the promo code. Uh, there are some stipulations with the promo code. It has to be an order of $25 or more. And you can only use it one time until the fall season starts and we'll start all over again. Hey, Big Top. Hey, you want to help me? You want to help me uh, with these seed trays? Huh? <laughs> I know you would. I do. I know you would help me. Yeah. Yeah, I know you would if you could. That's right, buddy. That's right. I do have a blog up on the website, and it shows you step by step on exactly how we start seeds here. Everything's in there. So if you're interested in that, in case you know you think you may have forgot something after watching the video, go check that out. It's over on our website, and it's under the blog section at the top. B L O G blog. But first thing is first, is you want a really good seed starting mix. Hoss has one of the best ones out there. It's extremely fine, it's awesome. As long as you get you a good seed start mix, you're good to go. But what I like to do with my seed start mix is I like to wet my seed start mix down first. Some people don't do that. That's just what I like to do because it takes a minute for this seed starting mix to get moist enough. It'll repel water. So you don't want it to do that. You want it to soak in all that water. And to me, it's a lot easier to do it before I put it in these seed trays. Cause what can happen is, is my seeds can float up or and come out or go to the next cell. And I don't want that. So I always love to pre-moisten my seed starting mix first. Once we got it good and moist, we're just gonna pack it in our seed starting tray. I'm going to plant more tomatoes than I need because I don't ever know if they're gonna come all come up or I'm gonna have issues or whatever. I'll have more than I need and always what happens is that with the extra, I will gift them to my friends that are wanting to grow tomatoes. Always mark your seeds. Gonna make me a little indention in the trays or the sails right here. That's where my seeds are gonna go, like so. You don't want it too deep. The tomato seeds are gonna be very small. I'm just gonna drop it right in the hole. And you try to get one seed per sail. If you get more than one in there, it's okay. You can thin it out later. So what I've normally done in the past is I come back and I put perlite over the top which is that white stuff looks like styrofoam but it's actually volcano rock but I really don't have that much left and so this year I'm just going to just gently cover them up with my finger it's going to work just fine the uh the perlite just kind of helps with dampening off which is a disease your plants can get and the main thing with your seedlings is this do not let them dry out don't let them dry out also don't overwater them. You just want the soil to be moist. Another thing that I would do, because this is a sterile soil mix, that's what you want for seed starts, because they got everything they need for their first week or so in that shell of that seed, right? So as they get mature, they're gonna need a little something. So what I'll do, and I'll show you guys this, this is a siphoning system. I'll take a five gallon bucket, I'll put a water soluble fertilizer in the five gallon bucket and we'll fill it all the way up with water. And then I also put that micro boost in there from Hoss as well. And what this does is, is this will go down in the bucket. This will attach to the water hose in my wand. So when I'm watering the seedlings, they're gonna get a minute, just a small dose, cause you don't wanna overdo it because these things are small. So you can, you can actually over fertilize them extremely easy. This right here dilutes it so much and it's perfect for seedlings. But I'll show you guys when we get to that point on how to use this. And there we have it. I got 70 tomato plants. I actually got a little more than 70. I got a little miscellaneous row right here. But I got 70 tomato plants and I'll keep you guys updated on these guys. They're out there growing cycle and I can't be more excited for this year's spring and summer garden season to start. Well, y'all, the rain is finally here. What you think, boys? Hmm? 
What y'all think? Like that rain? Hmm? Sounds great on that tin roof though, don't it? Sure does. Hey, guess what? Got some seeds started today. Sure did, all the tomatoes started. Yeah, I was gonna go tell Peaches, but I think I'm gonna have to wait and tell her in the morning cause this rain is fixing to go all night, I believe. Yeah. Plus I know she's probably in bed for sure with that rain on that tin roof. <laughs> yep. I'll just shoot her a text. How about that? 